You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to Watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Financial health. Well, just like you should be concerned about your physical health, you need to be concerned about your financial health. But uh, whereas eating can fix your your personal health, your maximize, optimize your physical health, well, you got to do something more for financial health. And with us now, we've got a new guest that I know you're going to really get into her message, Esther Kuznets. And Esther, it's great to have you on the show. So how do you define uh, financial health? Because physical health, it's like what's your blood sugar, your A1C, your cholesterol, your triglycerides. What's the equivalent measure for your financial health? Well, first of all, thank you, Carrie, for having me. I really appreciate being on the show. Um, so financial health basically is when you really, you don't have to worry so much about how you're going to pay the bills. You know, if you if you want to go to a nice dinner, you can afford to do that. You're not borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. That's financial health the way I see it. You have money in the bank. Um, if, if something were to happen, you could afford to, to take care of it. Should you lose your job, you've got money for to live on for a few months. You've got, if you're not retired yet, you've got a good start on it so that at some point you're not going to have to worry. To me, that's truly what financial health is. Okay. I'll buy it. So the, but the, you know, physical health is easier to measure than financial health. It, what you're describing is kind of like. All right, so you got six months of emergency expenses in the bank. All right, you, you're not, you want to buy something, you could buy it. Like you said, go out to dinner. I don't know, that's getting more and more expensive every day. Um, but it's harder to measure, though. Is there an objective measure for it? I think it's how you're sleeping at night. That's how I measure it with my clients. You know, how are you sleeping? Are you up all night worrying about paying the bills? Are you concerned that, you know, you got a kid in college and he might have to leave because you can't cover it and he's not covering it? Financial health, are you worried about your debt? Because that's a huge one. Um, you know, is your debt in order or are you really overextended and you don't know how to get rid of some of that? And that's even growing, especially this year and last year with the interest rates going up and it's gotten way out of hand. So, you know, maybe maybe it's easier to know if you're financially unhealthy because you're freaking out all the time, but it, it is so important. And of course, if you are up all the time and, and you are nervous and freaking out, as I would say, that is going to affect your physical health in, in big ways. For sure. For sure. So, I mean, I guess your advisory company, you help people build their financial health, build your financial health. What is what when you're evaluating a prospective client? Uh, what do you what do you look for? Well, I th first of all, what's the debt and how much you got? How much are you bringing in? You know, money in, money out is obviously huge. And then once we take care of money in, money out, how much do you have for retirement based on how old you are and when you want to retire? Do you have other money that might not be in a retirement account that you can get to if maybe you need a new, when you need a new car or if your air conditioner goes out in the middle of August? Those types of things we work on. And then, you know, of course, the next step is, well, we got to grow your assets. How much risk are you going to take and how are we going to invest it? But the, the first thing we look at is the whole picture of who this person is, where they are financially, what are the problems and what are the pluses? You know, what are they ahead of the curve on? And then from there, it's a lot easier to move forward. Okay. And uh, so just give us an example of somebody who came in who was uh, financially uh, near rigor mortis and you helped, uh, you helped her turn it all around. Um, okay. So 
I've actually had the talk with um, clients that were over 70 and I even had one over 80 and I actually had to tell them, you got to get a job. You are what you're going to, you're going to run out of money and you need to get some kind of a side hustle somewhere. I don't care if it's part time, find something you like to do, but we need to get you set and we need to really, you need to bring in way more money. Not only that, but how many times are you going out to eat? That's got to stop. You know, you need to really be careful how you're doing this. Um, how much time are you spending on Amazon? That's a huge one. Um, so it's, it's tightening the belt. It's bringing in more sometimes. And that's a really, really hard conversation to have. I've had people come in with $10,000 to their name that they wanted to invest with me, yet they were over $55,000 in debt and didn't own anything. So it's like, you know, you can't do this. You got to take a real hard look at yourself and say, you know, I understand you don't want to work, but at 65 years old, you're going to have to do something because this is not going to sustain you. That's a that's a harsh financial wake up call, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. It's horrible. All right. So, uh, did they listen to you? I don't know. I haven't heard from them again. You know, and and sometimes, as they were leaving, I said, "You didn't know about this, right?" And they said, "Yeah, I guess we just had to hear it, but we didn't want to hear it." You know, we were hoping that you'd have a better idea. I uh, said, so well, well hey, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> I, I, you know, my crystal ball doesn't always work and my magic wand is lost. So, you know, this is on you at this point. <laughs> so in other words, the thing to tell that person is the lottery is not a business plan or a financial plan for success. Right. That's, that's not your retirement plan is not the, the lottery. Exactly. <laughs> hey, yeah. People are in denial, huh? A lot. And, you know, and then you get those that have plenty and they're afraid to spend it. You know, you have the other side where they have all kinds of money and, you know, they're still going to consignment shops or their their shoes are all, you know, 40 or so. It's like, do yourself okay. a favor. You, you could do this. You know, you can afford this. And they're, they're afraid to spend anything. So, and they are financially healthy and then some. Yeah, well, they're like uh, financially uh, anorexic there, if you will, because... <laughs> You know, they're living in a scarcity mindset, which, hey, you know, living beneath your means is really the best way that I've right. seen to really build wealth and really have a great retirement. Unfortunately, I was never one of those who could do it. <laughs> I, I tried, I, that's, and that's like what I try to help my clients with, living beneath your means rather than living outside your means. And, you know... Don't lease the car. You can't afford it. Get something used, you know, that kind of thing. And, and you know, put money aside. Let's take X amount out of your checking account every single month and start a plan that way so that, you you know, you can grow something to get started on. I don't care how old you are. It's never too late to start your financial health and start digging yourself out and so you can be more comfortable in the future. Yeah. Hey, it just makes so much sense. So... Emotional maturity is a lot like financial maturity. <laughs> that is, you put off pleasure today for a return and a better tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but getting people to see the wisdom of this, not easy. Sometimes they've already seen it. Again, they just need to be get, you know, smacked in the face with it. So somebody else has to tell them. You know, you need to get out and do something. This is not working. It's not going to work. And, you know, if you're only bringing in 20000 a year and you are spending 40000 a year, you got to know it's it's not going to let, and you got nothing in the bank. You know, you can't keep living off of debt. And the big problem that I saw as the um, real estate was going up is people were taking uh, home equity lines on a value of their house, which I believe was a false value. And now those home equity lines, the interest rates have shot up. The houses are worth a little bit less and they got to pay off this debt and they still aren't making enough. You know, they're making what they were making before when they were living off the home equity. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a huge problem and it's out there and it's going to, it's catching up to a lot of people. Yeah. And you went in debt to keep, maintain your lifestyle. And then, uh, you wind up housing prices go down and you could be underwater. Correct. And it's your lifestyle that's really underwater and you don't want to see it. And you need to change your lifestyle. You need to save more, do less, 
If you're going to restaurants four or five times a week and they're costing you $150 a time, maybe you ought to stop doing that you know? and, and see what makes more sense, like eating home or at least going to lower price restaurants once or twice and that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not going to listen to you, but then again, probably not the person you want as a client anyway, but, uh, you know, I certainly am living beneath my means now. It took me, yeah. uh, took me decades to get there, but, uh, one day I just woke up and sometimes though, does it pay to go a little bit more than your means to get something that you think is going to have a payoff in the future? Sometimes it might, but you really need to think long and hard about it. I mean, if it's going to break you, no, because you're never going to get there. But if if you see a possibility and you don't do it all the time, the problem is once somebody does it once, I see them doing it, you know, it becomes an habit. Just like people that take money out of their 401ks because they're not financially healthy. And so they take money out of their 401ks and they look at it like a piggy bank and then it's gone. If you never take that first amount out, it will be there until you retire. But once that first withdrawal happens, what I see is it's gone mm -hmm. and it just becomes a piggy bank. So the whole thing of it is if you want to do something because you see it's a, it's an investment or, or whatever it is, one time is fine. But once it gets to be a habit, then you're going to put yourself right back underwater again. You got to be really, really careful. Yeah. So you, you want to learn from your past mistakes, not to... Uh keep repeating them over and over again, which so many of you out there do. Hey, yeah. So now you save this money, where are you putting it, Esther? Uh, well, since I'm a financial advisor, I generally put it in the stock market. You know? And then at this point with, with a recession possibly on the way, probably on the way, I've tightened the belt there and not getting too aggressive in, in portfolios. But, you know, again, at this point, not reaching for the trees and, and wanting to grow assets as much as maybe a couple of years ago, but mostly locking it in, um, keeping it in the boring, you know, big dividend paying stocks. And I'm, I'm adding to my bond portfolio, even though the interest rates are going to go up, I believe it's only going to happen once or twice more, not that much. And once recession hits, they'll drop them again. And it'll be nice to have some in there. Um, so that's basically, you know, I, I keep it easy. And mostly, you know, the regular liquid assets. And if things go worse than I expect, I can just go right to cash. Okay. And uh, where do you keep your cash now with the banking crisis in full swing? There are still very good banks. And, you know, I mean, the clearing firms are, are safe and liquid and it's not all of them. It's a few banks. And I mean, I was in the industry back in 08, you know, we had some big ones go and I think we learned a lot from that where the government comes in just like they just did over the weekend and find some big conglomerate behemoth to come take it over and make everything sound again. And yeah. no, I don't see that changing and I don't see that really being a huge problem this time. All right, from your mouth. <laughs> one, the one thing you should learn is that if uh, Barney Frank is on your bank's board, don't put money there. Take it out. You gotta right? be careful. Well, and, and again, you know, the larger banks, you're never, you're not going to have a problem with because they're, you know, they're financially sound at this point and I don't see anything going on there. Although not to say it can't happen. I, I, I used Bear Stearns once upon a time, a long time ago. So I get it. Fine company that no longer exists. Yeah. Yeah. But in all seriousness, uh, well, Dodd-Frank is dead, which is a good thing because Dodd-Frank embraced the whole concept that legislatively embraced the bail-in concept mm -hmm. and when you've got a system that's fractional reserve uh you can't you can't uh, ask the depositors to uh to bail out the entity that they had no control over whatsoever other than to uh deposit money into it right uh, that will destroy the confidence whatever measure is left in the system and lead to a major financial collapse. So that's yeah, where I, I, don't, I don't see that now. Um, I see, yeah, I see, yeah, I see big problems still with real estate, to, you know, and, and the loans, you know, these loans with the interest rates going up and the people can't afford to pay that off. I see problems with, you know, other stuff. 
But as far as these banks go, um, the one bank that had all these treasuries, um, I thought that was brilliant. The government buy the treasuries off of them, give them the cash they need, and then they'll just hold on to them and, and keep the interest and actually make money on the deal. The bank stays, you know, solvent and, and everything works in the end. Um, there's different answers for different problems, but I think so far they've been able to keep things pretty much moving forward, which is financially healthy for all of us. <laughs> well, it's mandatory because once there's a loss of faith in the banking industry, it's all over. Well, yeah. uh, you know, they should have uh, dealt with SV, SVB. SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. They should have dealt with it much faster, shouldn't have been allowed to collapse and yeah. that's on them. And that's a failure to learn from history. Uh, hopefully you're right. And uh, the banking uh, crisis, you know, it's always uh, people are always fighting the last battle. So, right. Let's see, hey Esther, we want to find out more about you. Connect with you on the web. Tell us the best place to find you. www.starfinancialsolutions.com is my website. Esther Kuznets, E S T H E R K U Z N E T Z. Uh, my email is Esther, E-S-T-H-E-R, at starfinancialsolutions.com. Right. All right. Well, thank you, Esther. We appreciate you coming on. If you've got a question for Esther and myself, email address is kl at kerrylutz.com, and there'll be a link to Esther's site in the show notes of this interview. Just go click the link, and you'll get her right there. And Esther, really appreciate you coming on. We'll talk to you again. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful being here with you and getting to meet you and all your listeners. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.